Have you ever tried talking to your friends or family members about the carnivore diet and they say things like, you're gonna die of a heart attack or you're gonna get scurvy? Very frustrating, right? Yes. Well, all you need to do is send them this video because today we're gonna debunk five carnivore diet myths that just aren't true. Cool. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Carnivore Quest. My name is Cassie, and if you're new to our channel, my husband Larry and I document our carnivore diet journey back to better health and share it here on YouTube. I've lost almost 100 pounds eating meat and animal products like butter, eggs, and cheese. I'm nearly 52 years old. I feel better than I did in my 20s because I've been overweight since I was a teenager. It's so frustrating when I try to convince somebody I care about to give the carnivore diet a try to see how they feel after 30 days and they just won't listen. I just love them and want the best for them. And if you were sent this video by someone on a carnivore diet who cares about you, please watch until the end because after I go over some common myths about the carnivore diet that aren't true, I'll briefly run down all the health improvements I've experienced eating an animal-based diet. Plus, I'm gonna show you a three-day meal plan to get you started. All right, the first myth we're gonna debunk is the carnivore diet will make you nutrient deficient. One of the most common myths I hear is that the carnivore diet is lacking essential nutrients. People are so quick to assume that if you're not eating fruits, vegetables, or grains, you must be missing out on critical vitamins and minerals. Animal products are incredibly nutrient dense, especially when you incorporate things like organ meats. Take beef liver, for example. It's often called nature's multivitamin because it's loaded with vitamins A, B12, riboflavin, and iron. I must say a lot of carnivores don't consume organ meats because the carnivore diet in itself is high in nutrients. Eggs are another powerhouse food providing choline, which is essential for brain health, along with other vitamins like D and K2. And then there's seafood. Oysters, for instance, are one of the best sources of zinc. And salmon is packed with omega-3 fatty acids, which are crucial for heart and brain health. And let's save the best for last, the king of all meats, beef. Beef contains several essential nutrients, including protein, iron, zinc, selenium, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, phosphorus, and potassium. So when you're eating a well-rounded carnivore diet that includes muscle meat, organs, and fatty cuts, you're getting a wide spectrum of essential nutrients. Of course, hydration and keeping up with your electrolytes are very important. So let's thank the sponsor of today's video, Element. Element's a delicious electrolyte drink mix that comes in these convenient single serving packets. Whether you're on a carnivore diet or a ketogenic diet, it's extremely important to keep up with your daily electrolytes to avoid things like fatigue, headache, and muscle cramps. And Element's got us covered. Each packet contains 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Over the summer months, my favorite element flavor was definitely the grapefruit salt. But now there's a chill in the air, and I'm so excited because on October 22nd, Elements releasing their winter chocolate medley. Chocolate raspberry, chocolate mint, and chocolate chai will be back for a limited time, and Larry and I cannot wait. And soon after the chocolate medley's release, keep an eye out on your notifications because Larry and I are gonna do a video dedicated to all our favorite recipes using Element. As always, Element's offering our viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight free single serving packets with any Element order. This is the perfect way to try eight of Element's delicious flavors before your next order. You can have Element delivered right to your door using our link below at drinkelement.com forward slash carnivore quest. I can't think of a better way for you to get the quality electrolytes you need and support our channel at the same time. So head on down to drinklmnt.com forward slash carnivore quest to get yours today. And Element has the best customer service around. If for any reason you're not 100% satisfied, keep the product and receive a full refund. Thanks again, Element, for sponsoring today's video. Myth number two, the carnivore diet will cause heart disease and raise your cholesterol. I hear this one a lot. One of the biggest fears people have about the carnivore diet is that all this meat and fat will skyrocket your cholesterol and clog your arteries. We've been taught for decades that fat, especially saturated fat, is the villain when it comes to heart health. But in reality, it's all the sugar, grains, and processed foods. They're the true villains. First of all, not all cholesterol is bad. You've got LDL, often labeled the bad cholesterol, and HDL, 
the good cholesterol. What many people on the carnivore diet find is while their LDL might increase, their HDL also goes up and their triglycerides, another key heart health marker, often go down. When you completely cut out processed carbohydrates, sugar, and inflammatory seed oils, you're actually reducing the main drivers of inflammation in the body, which are much more closely linked to heart disease than cholesterol alone. Studies are starting to show that higher cholesterol isn't as dangerous as once thought, especially in people without other risk factors like obesity and metabolic syndrome. After consistently eating a carnivore diet for the last three years, I've had my blood work done fairly regularly and my numbers are great. The third myth we're gonna crush is you'll have no energy without carbohydrates. This myth comes from the idea that our bodies need carbohydrates for fuel, but that's not exactly true. Carbs are just one source of energy. When you drastically reduce your carbohydrate intake, your body shifts into a state called ketosis, where it starts burning fat for energy instead of glucose. When you enter ketosis, your liver produces molecules called ketones, which are a clean, efficient fuel source. Many people on the carnivore diet report that once they adapt to this new way of fueling, their energy levels actually stabilize. Gone are the super crashes and the mid-afternoon slumps. Instead, you get a steady flow of energy from the fat that you're burning. Personally, I can tell you that once I became fat adapted, there were no more peaks and valleys. I felt great all day long and I didn't feel the need to snack constantly. Just so you know, there can be an adjustment period, sometimes referred to as keto flu. But once you get through that, most people experience that their energy levels are better than ever. Another concern I hear a lot is that the carnivore diet will wreck your gut health. People are used to hearing that fiber is essential for digestion. And since the carnivore diet has little to no fiber, they assume that it must be bad for your gut. But here's where things get interesting. Fiber isn't as necessary as we've been led to believe. While fiber can help bulk up stool and aid digestion for some, it can actually irritate the digestive tract for others, leading to bloating, gas, or discomfort. However, on the carnivore diet, many people find that without fiber, their digestion actually improves. Less bloating, fewer stomach issues, and more regular bowel movements. Animal products are highly bioavailable, meaning your body absorbs the nutrients from them more efficiently, leaving less waste for your digestive system to deal with. This can lead to smaller, more efficient bowel movements. It's also worth mentioning that cutting out inflammatory foods like grains, legumes, and certain vegetables can improve gut health for people who are sensitive to them. Of course, everyone's gut's different, but for many people, the carnivore diet actually leads to improved gut health. So just a warning, when you first start the carnivore diet, you're definitely going to be dealing with some loose stool. But after two to three weeks on the carnivore diet, regularity returns. The last myth we're going to bust today is that the carnivore diet is not sustainable. People often say the carnivore diet is too restrictive or extreme. And sure, it's definitely not the norm, but that doesn't mean it's not sustainable for those who choose it. Sustainability really depends on what works best for you. If you enjoy eating animal-based foods and feel great doing it, then why not stick to it? Yeah. One of the reasons the carnivore diet can feel sustainable for so many is because it's simple. No more stressing over macro ratios, complex meal plans, or endless grocery lists. Just focus on quality animal products. Another aspect people often overlook is the elimination of cravings. When you're eating a high fat, high protein diet, your body stays satiated for longer. You're not constantly thinking about food or dealing with sugar cravings, which makes the diet much easier to stick to. In fact, many people find that after a few weeks, they don't even miss the variety of foods they used to eat. To be fair, my carnivore diet journey has been littered with slip ups. Most people who are obese like I was got there from eating sugar and carbs. And it is an addiction and it's hard to give up. The longer you go eating an animal-based diet, the more sustainable it becomes. And for those of you who have stuck around to the end, here's a quick breakdown of some of the carnivore diet benefits I've experienced. I've lost 96 pounds. When we first started this diet, I was riddled with depression and that's just not the case anymore. My thyroid levels have improved, leading to a reduction in my medication. My blood pressure is completely normal. I used to toss and turn all night, but now I sleep like a baby. I have long lasting, sustaining, energy every single day. And I've even given up coffee. But most importantly, I survived sigmoid colon cancer eight years ago 
and I'm still here today, which was one of the main reasons I started the carnivore diet because I had to cut out sugar, which is fuel for cancer. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And if you find that this video is helpful and you're ready to start the carnivore diet, let us know in the comments below. We have lots of great veterans who are more than happy to cheer you on or give you a little advice. And so are Larry and I. And hey guys, before you go, hit the like button. And remember, no sugar, no carbs, no cheating. Mm -hmm.